Okay, so the first thing you need to do is run on down to Lowe's or Home Depot, whichever is your favorite, and get some of these. They're one and a half inch by three quarters inch by eight feet long, and you're gonna need three of them per fence panel. And just in case you don't trust my measurements, here's a close up of what they look like. Now when you get started, what you wanna do is measure four and a half inches in from the end of the board. You wanna lay your paddle bit so that the edge of it touches the line you just drew. Then find that center point so that when you drill, the edge of your blade is gonna to touch that line that you drew. Now here's a tip. You wanna avoid bad spots in the wood like this. There's gonna be times where you can't. So just go slow, otherwise you're gonna splinter and break that board. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to take a piece of scrap PVC, the same width as the paddle bit that you just used. Drop it in to test that hole to make sure that it's the correct fit. Now leave that pipe in that hole for a second as a guide. You're gonna now take a piece of four inch sewer line and place it there as a marker. Now I'm gonna tell you where that four inch PVC comes into play here in a second, but use the edge of that to mark for your next hole. Same thing, edge of the paddle bit to touch the line you just drew. Now you'll notice that I've clamped two boards together. That's because you can do more than one at a time. In fact, you can probably drill out three at a time if you have them clamped good. But that's something you're gonna have to work up to because if you've never used a paddle bit before, <laughs> you're in for a treat. Start with one, work up to two, and if you get good enough and confident enough, move on to three. Now you're just gonna keep repeating this process until you get to the end of that eight foot board. And once you do, you're gonna find out that after you make your last mark, you've got about roughly an inch and a half too much wood. You're simply gonna cut that off. And now for the dangerous part. Anytime you're using a power tool, Someone can get hurt, usually me. So for the love of God, take every safety precaution possible, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this four inch PVC pipe and you're gonna cut three quarter inch slices off of it, just like you were cutting the Thanksgiving turkey. Just try not to cut your hand. Now you're gonna need about 18 of these for each fence panel. So that's 18 chances to cut off your thumb. So again, be careful. Now this next part's a lot safer, since I've never heard of anyone cutting their own thumb off with a pipe cutter. However, I'm sure someone's done it, so be careful. Now what you need to do is cut a piece of PVC as tall as you want your fence. That's gonna be your pattern. You're gonna use it to cut all the other pieces of PVC pipe. Simply line them up, cut them, and then go ahead and place them inside what's gonna become the middle bar of your fence. Now this bar should be a little looser on the pipe, so you may have to bore it out just a little bit more to give it that space. Once you've got all the PVC in place, you're ready for the top rail. And that top row is gonna have a little bit of a tighter fit on the PVC than the middle rail. So you're gonna to need to tap it into place with a mallet. Now I'm using a steel hammer, but you'll probably wanna use a rubber mallet. Steel can actually crack and break your wood and takes a much lighter touch. Simply start the top rail at one end and work your way down to the other. The bottom rail is done the exact same way as the top rail. Start at one end, and you work your way down to the other. Now you'll notice this one cracked. Should have used a rubber mallet. But I'm gonna show you how to fix that here in a second. After you get the bottom rail on, you're gonna to wanna to adjust the spikes below the rail to the same length. Now I do this with bricks. You simply put two on the ground, you put your fence on top of that, and you tap the PVC down to the ground using the brick as a guide. You could do this with the top as well and have spikes on top of your fence, but for this particular one, I'm not doing that. And here it is. After hours of hard work, it never fails that something goes wrong.
But don't distress, this is an easy fix. All you need to do is put a little dab of liquid nails in that crack. And then take two zip ties, one on each side of the PVC pipe and pull it tight. This will maintain the structural integrity around that PVC. And it will keep you from completely having to replace that last beam. And if you're worried about how that's going to look, once it's painted and put in your display, no one's ever going to notice it. And if anybody points that out, they're simply a jackass that should be clubbed like a harp seal. By the way, don't club harp seals. Oh yeah, remember those little three quarter inch slices of PVC? Well, you might want to go get them because it's time to install them. First, put a dab of liquid nails in each spot and then insert one of the PVC slices. Since that middle rail is looser, you should be able to slide it up and down a little bit. So now you're going to add another dab of liquid nails and then press that middle bar in. You should clamp each end to make sure that it stays in place. You're also going to want to add a dab of liquid nails around every other piece of PVC along that middle bar. Once it dries, this will keep that bar from sliding down. You can also use screws, but that's time consuming and pretty expensive. Now this is the part where you might want to have a little bit of patience. Let that dry. It's going to take it a little bit. Once it does, then you're going to add another gloop, gloop being a technical term, at the junction where the 4 inch pipe meets the PVC pipe. If you've ever looked at a real rod iron fence, you'll see that they've welded those together. So while this may look sloppy at first, once painted, it's going to look like welds and it is going to give you added strength. Then you're ready for the fun part. It's time to paint. This is the part where you make so many trips to Home Depot or Lowe's that they begin to question whether you're actually using the paint or huffing it. And there you have it. Ta-da! It's done. And now you got to install it, and that's the next video, which I haven't done yet because I haven't installed it yet. But that's coming. Stay tuned. Oh yeah, and don't club harp seals.